The Battle of Anderson was over, but for the small South Carolina town, the war would last just a few more days. Anderson finds itself occupied next under the kudzu. News of the Battle of Anderson had reached the small town just minutes before the first Union Raiders arrived. Crossing the Rocky River, the troops came upon a surprise. Nearby, hundreds of townspeople had gathered to celebrate the annual May Day festivities at Silverbrook. Most of the celebrants were women and children. Fleeing from the oncoming Union Raiders, they ran into town while the troops crossed the picnic area and headed to University Hill, the site of the Confederate treasury and home of rumored Confederate gold. The Raiders trashed the treasury, finding no gold, but littering the surrounding area with the only thing they did find, worthless paper bonds. But to the young girls in Anderson, this paper was worth more than gold, for paper was in short supply during the war. For the first night, all of the townsmen were held in the courthouse while the raiders searched the town. Miss Elizabeth Bleckley reported the following. These wretches remained in our town two days and nights, committing all kinds of depredations, and left us in a deplorable state with nothing to eat and our homes looted of everything valuable. Local legend tells that the only reason Anderson was not burned was because local business owner, Bayless F. Creighton, allowed the soldiers to drink wine he had stored in his cellar. His business was located at the corner of East Benson and South Main. The Union troops claimed to be acting under orders from a General Brown. The subsequent searches in military records could find no such general in the area at the time. Their identity remains a mystery. I'm Brian Scott, and join us next week as we uncover more history under the kudzu.